In this video, we're going to see how to set up twist bones to deform the upper arm, the forearm, or the thigh properly. When defining my character, I ignore uh, the rolls here. I left those empty for every limb. But I do have bones in my skeleton uh, on the upper arm, on the forearm, and on the thighs. You could have some extras on the calf and on the neck as well. It's the same principle. So first let's take a look at the hierarchy in the schematic view. You can see that those twist bones are uh, parented to the upper arm and to the lower arm, but um, they don't have children. Like the hand is a direct child of the lower arm, but the hand is not a child of the lower arm twist. So they are uh, separate bones, separate branches. This is very useful in the game engine um, because you can remove those bones uh, when you go to a higher LOD levels. So when you get uh, far from the character, uh, or if you have like smaller characters that don't need those bones, but you still want the skeleton to be compatible, uh, it's better to have those as like derived branches and not in series one after the other. And let's look at the skinning. I have my Maya scene here uh, where I uh, set up the, the mesh with the skeleton and I, I skin the weights. So on the lower arm, um, the like the lower part of the lower arm is skinned on the twist joint. So when I rotate the hand on the roll axis, uh, the goal is to have the twist bone rotate as well, right? To avoid the candy wrapping that uh, you see here. So the skin weight looks like this, lower arm, hand, and the lower arm twist. For the upper arm, uh, the twist influences the upper part of the upper arm, while uh, the parent bone, the upper arm itself, influences the lower arm. So if I rotate with the preserved children option here, you can see that when I rotate the parent, it's uh, the area next to the elbow that gets influenced. And when I rotate the twist, which is actually a child of the upper arm, is the upper part that rotates. So if I look at the skinning, you have the clavicle area, and the upper arm area is down there. And then you have the twist up there. So it's important to have this reversed uh, skinning because the goal for us uh, when we set up the twist joints in Motion Builder is to create this effect. When I rotate the upper arm without preserved children, when I rotate the upper arm, I want to counter rotate the upper arm twist to keep the deltoid steady like that and have uh, the roll rotation spread through the entire arm and not just uh, in, the, in this region here. It's the same principle with the thigh. When I rotate like this, I want the twist bone to counter rotate and smooth out this roll rotation. So when I look at the skinning, the thigh bone actually influences the lower part of the thigh and the thigh twist influences the upper part of the thigh. So upper arms and thighs should have this uh, reversed skinning while calf and lower arm should have the, the default skinning. <clears throat> Back into Motion Builder with our twist bone uh, properly uh, skinned. We want to create uh, a logic to automatic, automatically drive uh, the twist bone rotation when we rotate the main bones. 
For that, we're going to use a relation constraint. So insert relation. Let's call it a relation twist. So I'm going to add all my twists. So upper arm twist left, lower arm twist left, upper arm twist right, lower arm twist right, and thigh twist left, thigh twist right. And I'm going to drag them as receivers because those are going to be uh, driven. Then I'm going to take uh, the, the driver bone. So for the upper arm twist, it's going to be the upper arm. For the lower arm, it's going to be the hand. The lower arm twist is going to rotate based on the hand rotation. Same for the right arm. And for the thigh, uh, the driver is going to be the thigh itself. And if you have a calf twist, uh, the driver is going to be the foot. I'm going to drag them in as senders. And uh, because I selected uh, the bones in the right order, they are all facing the corresponding uh, bone, but ju you just want to make sure they are all aligned and maybe rearrange them if uh, need be. So I'm preparing a little animation here where I rotate every limb one after the other on the roll axis. So I now I see the candy wrapping that I want to avoid. <clears throat> so because we work, we just work on the roll axis, we need to take the rotation coming from uh, the left hand here and convert it um, because the rotation is a vector. So we want to go to converters and say uh, vector to number. Plug the rotation. And then we can plug that in the lower arm twist rotation. Okay. So the first thing is you probably see a big uh, uh, broken uh, bone at the moment. It's because you need to make sure both the senders and the receivers are set to local transform. So now it looks better. And I can see that uh, when my hand rotates, the roll bone uh, also rotates. And if I rotate the hand only uh, on the other axis, nothing happens because we're only taking the X rotation and the rest of the rotation is just zero. Maybe it's just a little too strong though when I rotate the hand on the roll axis and the X. Um, maybe I want the twist to only rotate 50 or 70%. So here I can add a multiply node in number multiply and I'm going to plug that here plug that there right click disconnect and here uh, set value so by default uh, it's it was uh, one uh, but maybe I want to put it at 75% Okay, and if you have more twist bones, maybe you can just uh, duplicate that part here. Okay, and uh, just set a different number if you want like a progressive rotation. Uh, here I have a simple setup with only one twist bone, so I can leave it like that. Now we can copy paste that uh, for the, the upper arm. Plug the correct input, plug the correct output. Let's look at what's going on here. So now when my arm rotates, something strange happens. So before I plugged, it was like this. So the deltoid rotates a little too much. And when I plug, it's actually even worse because I'm adding an extra rotation. So for the upper arm, 
and it's going to be the same for the thigh, we actually want to multiply by minus 1. And now when I rotate my arm, the upper arm twist counter-rotates and remains steady. Maybe minus 1 is too strong, so again I can put it to minus uh, 0 0.75. So I, I do have a little bit of rotation, but uh, not quite as much. So there's still a little bit of counter rotation on the twist. And I'm going to copy paste that over to the thigh. So before I plug, let's look at how it is right now. So when I rotate, there's a lot of like torsion in this area and when I plug the twist multiplied by minus something it counter rotates nicely and I have a better deformation. Now it's just a matter of uh, copy pasting those to the right over to the right side and maybe if you tune the values uh, make sure you have the same values uh, on the left and right side if you have a, a symmetrical character at least and that's it you're done you have uh, now twist bones uh, set up and you can tweak the value uh, very easily If you use the template uh, scene that I linked before, um, there's already a setup for you in the base relation. There are all these nodes here, and you can see that it's the same. It's the, and I even renamed the, the nodes. So you have twist forearm, uh, and you already have the nodes if you have like several twist bones. So left forearm, maybe you have uh, twist 01, twist 02 then right forearm twist 01, twist 02 and you can tweak the values, you have the upper arm and the thigh uh, so you can just uh, grab your, your driver bones, so the upper arm, the hand, the thigh so put them as centers and uh, you can take the twist and place them as receivers and just uh, change the transform to a local transform and uh, this way it's a little bit faster for you to set up